Well, I think uh, since I last spoke to Beat TV, it's been an incredible year for video. I think, above all, editorially, we have a very strong video team out there, um, headed up, in fact, by my colleague, the deputy video editor, uh, Veronica Kandapar, who's ex-CNBC, ex-BBC, and uh, together, but above all, she has marshaled a team we've had in place for a few years now to produce excellent videos. Anything from something shot on an iPhone by one of our reporters but edited by us out in the field in Nigeria, a train going across Nigeria shot on an iPhone, to a wonderful piece about LIBOR, the very dry issue of interbank lending rates, but an amazingly made piece of video which actually really brought to life this topic and the controversies around it, using great graphics, very clever imagery, good pieces of camera, good interviews. I think editorially, the rest of the organization, the website and the paper really appreciate video now and what it's doing and see it's a crucial part of the multimedia mix. And I think that's reflected in the level of access we're given to the journalists in the organization, but also the fact that recognition of the team itself now, they always have been journalists, but now are reporting and are on camera themselves. And I think that's a great development. So Chris Booker in the US was reporting during the US election and did a very nice piece on the ground about the, the, the deep divisions in Ohio over the, um, the bailout of a, a plant, in, in, uh, a GM plant by um, Barack Obama. Um, and I think again just shows the strength of FT video now on the ground. Um, similarly we have excellent producers and reporters in China and Hong Kong. China is such a key area now for stories, whether we're talking about the markets or the political. Uh, only recently we've done one about the car dream in China turning sour with the uh, pollution of cities there. And then in the UK itself, we have a very good team here, both in the studio, um, headed up by Daryl Thompson, who produces our author's notes, our short views, uh, which are excellent finance analyses um, of anything from Chinese property bubbles to the different fates of the UK and US over austerity. And I think, therefore, what you're seeing overall is a mix of videos across the world and the big stories we're doing. The other thing is that we are now trying to very much, we're just at the early stages, but trying to bring in journalists who are largely used to writing, but who have done a few videos for us, to actually get them to think about making videos for us themselves. I think above all, really probably providing clips to the website. Um, we really, at the early stages of this, we haven't really started yet, but we're planning to trial that very soon uh, with the weekend section um, and just experiment there and then take this to other sections of the news organization as well and I think that could be a very exciting area clearly our rivals are doing it a lot of people are just putting clips up on the web shot on an iPhone and Android or whatever it might be and I think it's I think overall I think what we're seeing with video is just really important to give viewers a mix of videos um, we have a core a very strong core of quality videos which can be anything between two and five minutes very rarely over that now. I think that's as much as people can stomach. And that is, I think, sets the benchmark for everything else. But on top of that, I think you need other forms of output, shorter clips. They might be rougher in the way they're shot, but the content that comes from them could be very strong and it's, it's worth it for that. Well, I think at its core, I'm still very keen for video to be contextualized. I, I see it as something that should be complementary to our text, to our graphics. Um, and so I'll always encourage a video to be embedded in a relevant article and frankly I wouldn't want a, a video to be published without something going out in, in text as well. That's always been the aim of videos, it's, it's part of the multimedia offering to our audience now um, and I think it makes it stronger and I think it actually also helps in terms of the visibility of a video. If it flies by itself it can potentially disappear very quickly. However, uh, clearly there's an audience out there that um, consume a lot of news and analysis and reportage through video and through video alone. And in a way now, perhaps we want to meet that audience more um, by allowing it to be available um, outside the FT. And the key thing to know about FT videos is in fact, in front of the paywall, it's free, anybody can watch it. And we positively encourage people to embed the videos in their own blogs, on their websites to use that. And now in the process also of wanting to develop more syndication partners who can take our videos uh, from an API, whatever it might be, and just put it onto their websites. Um, and this is all about raising the profile of the FT through video. Again, at early stages, 
an experiment as well, but I hope it will work. I can't really share anything on syndication part at the moment. I mean, a lot of discussions going on. And it, it is a mixture of seeking out partners who will take our content for free and those who will take it on a paid-for basis. On a paid-for basis, it might be companies in other parts of the world who actually want uh, broadcasters who want to take the videos and put um, uh, subtitles over them. The translation rights, they have to buy that. Or if they want to strip it of advertising and use the, uh, the videos as they want. So that's something we're still working out. But we clearly know that beyond promoting to the outside world, we also want to develop some syndication partners quite strongly. Well, I mean, I would say that our videos are smart. I think they reflect the intelligence and the reach of the FT. I think also they, in terms of our finance and markets videos, they reflect the intelligence and analysis of our leading commentators, such as Martin Wolf and John Authors, uh, two very key names in the worlds of economics and investment analysis. Um, and I think it reflects the FT's desire to always take an empirical, pragmatic approach to the world, and that's reflected in the reporting that we do and I think a smart one as well, but also showing that we're on the ground, that we're showing the human face of videos. At the end of the day, I think a lot of our videos um, are in a very similar area to our rivals, and I think what they win on is just the quality of the videos. We absolutely cannot compete on the news front. Um, occasionally we will run a video which will create some headlines in itself. Um, last week we were covering the uh, commodities conference that we ran in Lausanne, and. Um, very strong lines were coming out of that about the need for greater transparency among commodities companies. And I think our videos contributed to that very strong line from that conference. Similarly, last year we, um, we interviewed the uh, former head of Olympus, Michael Woodford, and um, out of that came his revelations about the company and what he saw as possible wrongdoing. And also, I think, above all, his level of sort of personal angst about the company. But in general, the video is there to provide a compliment to the news pieces, I think what the FT can absolutely pride itself on, apart from being there with the news, is judgment and analysis. And I think that's, in general, why people want to come to the FT. And I think that's why people, I hope, will come to the FT video, both for judgment and analysis and the sort of level of access to different countries and people. I, I think we're more than business news. I think we, I mean, the FT has always been about joining the dots, and it's about joining the dots of both business, political, regulatory, and financial and so our stories will cover a bigger range than business um, where it goes we're all gambling on the future we're all thinking about it uh, we're all realizing that we have to keep moving fast and watching what our rivals are doing I think key areas are definitely it's about personalization it's about clips it's about sharing it's about a mix it's about the personal face it's a personal face of stories um, I think it's realizing that people will use video in their own particular way that will also consume it by itself without any related text. I think that's the, you know, the growing understanding to me is that people just will take video as their source of information. Um, it's there for pleasure, it's there for entertainment, and I think we probably need to bring more of that into what we do as well. And I think it's, it's, it's a constantly evolving language and we have to move with that. Um, today on the website we have, I think, an excellent interview with uh, Yaron Nanye, who's a sort of digital guru. Um, and really having a bit of a mea culpa about his early views on the web and how it should be free to everybody and now he's saying we should monetize it. The thing about the interview is it's not shot in a studio, we shot it down in the, uh, in the West End in London in front of a music shop, it's, it's shot in sort of handheld style, some nice graphics cut in, it's, it's a different style of shooting and I think it just shows one way in which we are constantly experimenting with what we do and it, it's, it's the only way. Um, it's about profile. Um, of course, we are keen to monetize where we can um, with advertising, um, and it's, it's continually evolving. So, anything I can say is we just got to keep keep one step ahead as much as possible.